Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? National, national sweater, I see. Yes, out the big national guns. days yeah. on you, I see. Okay. <laughs> we're, going, we're going Johnny America color. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, this is The Skating Lesson. We are going to discuss all things that happened at the 2021 U.S. Figure Skating Championships. So if you're new here, please subscribe below, smash that like button, and ring that bell. Lots of content coming this week. We're going to do a whole episode on the 2021 Skate Canada Challenge, and that'll be later tonight. We are planning it, and lots of old... Um, Videos coming your way this week. Um, Exciting. Oh, wait, I just want to show you one thing because there was this user who accused me of like taking his videos. So I just want to show you one thing, Jonathan. Oh, okay. The plot thickens. This is one of those moments where I just get to bond with the TSL viewers. <laughs> are all of the DVDs that I got from this guy, Dan, and there are more on the way. Plus, I have all of the VHS tapes that Judge Margaret gave me. Who was the toughest oh, wow. guy in New Jersey, like ever? She was in okay. Delaware, moved to Delaware. But so you are doing God's work, Dave Lee. Trying to get the highest quality, that NHK stuff. I, I'm just saying. Okay. So but I have to tell you to go back and watch some of those like 80s events that weren't worlds or the Olympics or nationals. It's it's amazing to see all of that. I love watching all of that. Me too. I mean. Midori, a jewel through and through. That Lux loop combo of Tanya's in the short, I mean, you're just bringing me so much joy with your work. <laughs> so, just, it's beautiful, beautiful. All right, so I think, the, I think the theme of today's episode is nationals clean. I have a clean white shirt on. Okay, okay. Mine's more under rotated. <laughs> <laughs> Because that also kind of was a thing, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> the judging of the ladies. Mm, I think mm. we need to go into it. I would like a discussion piece, okay? And I would like to start with the short program. And this is not to pick on any skater. This is indeed the um, fault of the panel. It is not this the happens all the time. This is not the fault of this. And we, I always try to say that when you discuss even something like Sotnikova or something like that. It's not Sotnikova's fault. Everyone's argument is with the judges. So I'm pulling out my favorite, which is the skatingscores.com. Yes. Because the short program enhanced protocols. Yes. What, and tell uh, me what I specific. Lori Parker was which judge? Which judge was Lori Parker? She is. For um, the ladies, let me just see here. Lori Parker was judge number, she wasn't. Oh, yes, she wasn't. She didn't judge ladies. I thought she did. It was Doug Williams, Catherine Speck, Sharon Watson, Alexander Ensman, Gretchen Bonney, Hannah Katz, and men. Lisa Earle. She judged the men, that's right. Yes. Okay, Lori Parker did judge the pairs. But okay, I would like you to point out one thing um, for the assistant technical specialist. Can you please read that name, Jonathan? Oh, yes. Here, wait, let me just bring it back up. Jeffrey de Gregorio. Okay, um, familiar name, perhaps. I don't know if you recognize it off the bat, but did you ever read Christine Brennan's first book, Inside Of course. Ed? Of course. Do you remember that there was a coach in Delaware who got in a screaming match with Pat Lipinski at the World Junior Figure Skating Championships before she moved to Richard Callahan? Yes, I do. I didn't remember the name until just now, but I do remember this story. He's known as Jeff D in skating circles. He also taught many jumps to many girls in the mid 1990s. Tara really brought in his peak and following the great uh, prowess of Tara Lipinski, he also taught triple jumps uh, to Sarah Hughes, Sarah Wheat, and even Jenny Kirk a bit. So I think okay. he worked with Jenny on her double axle. Now, um, <clears throat> I think it's interesting because as we talk the rotations, um, his skaters were known for perhaps not having the cleanest technical job, you know, yeah. <laughs> but perhaps it's something he doesn't see, <laughs> you know. The yeah, he did, it's, it's the anti shin model. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The okay. anti shin. <laughs> so, okay. Then that explains it because I have to say, um, and I did my first see alive with you, which was very fun watching the uh, ladies free skate. Um, Those are intense viewers. The, yes, they are. They are the diehards. But we kind of love that. 
Um, here's the thing. I, I know that a lot of fans right now, especially with the Russian thing, are so preoccupied about pre-rotation and all this sort of stuff. I have never realized what an epidemic the under-rotating was in the United States until the ladies event here. Like, of course, there's an occasional, someone who struggles with other rotations or something, but this was almost nonstop. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was alarming, I thought. And then, like you're saying, for it not to necessarily be called out was also interesting or selectively called out. I thought the judging in the short program in particular had some peculiar moments. Some. Yeah. <laughs> How would you have called Brady to so I have to tell you that Brady Tonell's short program combination is the most US nationals <laughs> judge combination of all time. Yeah. I that would, some judges were giving it plus four GOE. John. That was the triple Lutz, in my opinion, with at least an exclamation point. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be nice and say that the Lutz was a Q. It was like on the quarter-ish, right? So it's U.S. Nationals. We're going to give it the Q. The toe minimum under. Really that on that day, that toe, I think her toe is probably usually under. It was veering towards double under. Yeah. And I think that that's interesting. Her jumps over the last two seasons, this is before Tom, they've become tighter. And I don't know why that is, but it seems like it seems like her jump rotations have continually had more and more issues over time. Uh, it seems like, you know, the 2018 season, I think she was rotating uh, more easily, but it's just... Because that was one of the alluring things, what she couldn't provide us in a presentation. She was providing us with sort of a cleanliness in her landings back then. And um, we seem to have lost that overt cleanliness in the landings. Yeah, uh, the combination being marked, you know, plus four by judge six and seven, that's comical uh, to me. Yeah. I mean, you could go minus three to minus four on that combination, just on the different errors alone from the Lutz Q, the Lutz Edge and with the toe. So that's... Mm -hmm. This is where, and we had this viewer, of course, he's young and he was on CN, he's like, you're being mean. And it's like, I don't view it that way because I think, yes, you wanna promote your skaters at US Nationals, but this is the only chance they may have this year to get feedback, especially if they don't have the World Figure Skating Championships. And if the judges aren't telling you the truth, how are you gonna improve for next year when they may right. call you more accurately and they may uh, keep you off of you know, world teams when you have to go to world competition? Well, and we're going to talk about this then as the world team, you know, selections became available for the ladies. I think it's interesting to know who seems to be judged favorably nationally versus internationally. And I think they're, they're different. Uh, and I don't think an international panel would have let Brady slide with this. I mean, I think she got world arena marks. For yeah. that, I'm sure in my imagination, I can't prove this, but I could just see Tom inviting Mitch to watch or it's a pandemic. So maybe sending him videos <laughs> on the regular. I'll never forget like when we were visiting Tom, he was talking about how closely he talks to Mitch. And I thought, I believe that. I believe yeah. that. Yeah, okay. exactly. Who, Especially, Tom, of course, who was not here because he was at home in Colorado with COVID. Did he say he had COVID? Yes, he said he had mild, a mild case of COVID was in, was in one of the articles. So that was the big debate um, among skaters because the way they do the testing is when they first arrive, they have to take a test and then days later they have to take a test. So his skater, he did not go to the event, right? And then his skater, Paige Rydberg, also, um, she tested positive when they took the first test here. So maybe her symptoms didn't, you know, even develop, you know, yet. And then she had to miss nationals. And I think you have to stay quarantined at a separate hotel for an extended period of time. So that's rough. Not only do you have to miss your nationals. I mean, it's for safety. Obviously, I understand why it happens. And I think it's good that they're doing this. But I'm thinking for her, how tough that you have to then miss your nationals feel like the party is going on <laughs> like next talk time. about FOMO yeah yeah there and then be there for so long I I can like the only thing I can compare it to is that uh we went with in when I was junior with choir and band uh went to Disney World and I came down with like a really bad ear infection that became something else and 
I had like a 102 to 103 when I was there and the entire band had had, um, one girl had pneumonia on the airplane and it was each person, it became, it was like, it went through the band and choir, but I was in my hotel room the whole time with nothing to watch besides that like <laughs> infomercial about the Disney channel. <laughs> That's showing you all the things you're not doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Horrible. <That's true. laughs> so I feel for Paige Rydberg because I have had that kind of experience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's tough. That's tough. But I mean, more props to Brady, who does seem to just be her own tunnel visioned well, that was woman the, operation. People were like, are Brady and Vincent going to be, you know, because they all train together. I mean, could imagine if one person comes down, it could go, it could go to everyone. So right. and they were concerned they didn't have it. Um, but I, I have to say that, you know, anyone that wasn't here because of COVID, I don't think that they lost their spot nationally. I think that this is, this event, yes, it was a nationals and it was a real event and it was perhaps more real even than we thought, but it, it did have a feeling of not quite the same U.S. nationals. In the judging, I felt that they had a judges meeting where they thought, let's score them all through the roof for TV, for to encourage the kids or for whatever reason, but across the board, the scores that are usually inflated at U.S. nationals were just ridiculous. I mean, I, yeah. and McMahon was coming to our house with a check. I mean, it was exactly. a giant <laughs> cardboard one. And here's the thing, like even the skaters themselves you know, were giving you the indicator that they knew it was ridiculous as their knee-jerk reaction. You know, again, lovely to see everyone so happy, especially because the energy level. We did have several performances here that would have like blown the arena up with energy. Like we had those moments, but um, I, I mean, instead we just got these like hilarious responses to inflated numbers. <laughs> And I actually have to say, I did enjoy the Zoom uh, behind the skaters. I thought that that was a very nice touch during the pandemic. I was thinking, is that something that they should do all the time? But I think it's hard when, um, you know, there are people in the stands, but I was thinking what, you know, not everyone can always travel to competitions. And I thought it was a nice touch, especially here. A lot of pets, a lot of pets made appearances. And then, you know, there's always that like, one lady who would be like this and she was like and you're like um the camera's not on you <laughs> like nothing's you're totally confused one lady kept having it sideways <laughs> so she was always like waving like this i mean there were some pretty funny moments there you know i was on yesterday and they were mm -hmm. you know, corey Cercelli from canada was coming and we watched his free we watched jack jashensky's free and corey was saying that for jason's he wrote his sign backwards thinking that it would be mirrored on tv it wasn't, so he just looked like an idiot. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, that's funny. That's really funny. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, let's. I thought the one thing about most shocking costume. I think it's a. Um, it's a toss up between Brady Tanell and Madison Hubble. I have to tell you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and similarly themed in a strange way, but. I'll never forget the first time Brady wore this style costume at Skate America. This adult skater goes like sparkles <laughs> down the crack of my ass. <laughs> you know, like that's what I want to wear. And then now- well, I think it, it backfired. I think the goal was to be modern and edgy and sexy. However, I'm afraid in the execution of the idea, it actually read as matronly trying to be sexy. Does that make sense? Like, um, I think we said it on Steel Live. Like, I felt like it reminded me of like that glamour shots in the mall with like a middle-aged woman wearing a leather coat and a chain trying to show you she's sexy and current. And it just, it was a backfire for me. I think it's because of the hair. I think if okay. you're gonna do, I don't think you can do like a ballet. Well, it wasn't a real ballet button. Lorda Brown was telling me some tips for the dance world because I have an interview with her coming out and chatting. She said, in the dance world, they take from the chin. No, I have a big chin, that's the truth, but it goes from the chin to your ear line, and then that's how they know where your bun should go in the back. Oh, interesting. Okay. A little tip and trick. And I thought, hmm, her butt is not in the Lord of Brown way. And uh, it's very severe. And the hair is, so her hair is like Nancy Kerrigan pulled taut 
but then the costume is edgy. It's a mismatch, right? You need that like Vanessa James flowing hair. And here, here come all the comments. Why do you care? Why do you care? Why do you care? It's a performance. And, this is, and, it's a performance. It's, and yeah. I think she's trying to send a message with it. I, I think the, I understand the intention she's going for is the way she would like to be perceived. And I understand why she may want to do that. She just has to do it a different way. And why do you care about packaging? I think the biggest uh, lesson in packaging here was the rhythm dance between Chalk and Bates and Hubble and Donahue. And we'll get to that. But yeah. I think they both had one minor error. Uh, Chalk and Bates is more visible, but it comes down to a couple of things. But I think packaging, packaging, packaging for that rhythm dance. And totally. You no, know, um, it can elevate or not. Now, Alyssa Liu, you, you know, compared to the year she's had, looked great, right? In, I have to tell you, Dave, coming into this, and of, of course we saw um, mm -hmm. sort of one of the tougher watches for me here was Star Andrews. I think we don't need to go too much into it, but obviously that was a sort of a painful watch in both programs. And it's that's almost what I was expecting from Alyssa, was that kind of really tough go. All things considered in, in relation to themselves, I thought Alyssa packaged herself very well. I thought she looked beautiful and sophisticated and looks like a totally different person in many ways, how much she has grown up since the fall even. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised for her, especially how well that short program went. I don't like either of her programs in terms of the performance or the music. And I'm just consistent on that. It's not my cup of tea. I do think that one thing that someone like Jeremy can add to her is that he is someone who feels music and he selected mm -hmm. his own music. And he obviously wasn't a part of this creation process. Okay. Because he's now developing a relationship with Alyssa, I could imagine Jeremy choreographing for her, which I would like to see. And Jeremy working with her, sitting down, spending the time like Christy and Carol Yamaguchi sitting with Chris Metz, <laughs> working on those music selections. And what do you hear? And spending the time because I saw a girl that like something sad or intense has happened in music and she has a plastered smile on her face, which she was taught to do, which she is trying to do to perform, but it's not matching the music yeah. and it's a disconnect and people did point that out uh, repeatedly when they talked about her performance over the weekend in the disconnect. I think that her, her edges are getting better. I did see an improvement, which I did not see earlier in the season. It has a long way to go, especially in her posture. When she goes into the axle, she really hunches forward and um, you know, she's sitting in a kiss and cry with her legs up. You know, there's a lot of like things to work on to make this into a polished, performance, right? And, and I think that she is still a kid who is, you know, growing up and that she was kept younger maybe than some of the other skaters and she's young for her age. And I think now they have to, and I mean kept younger like by her coaches and how they packaged her. Yeah. And, I think, and I think now they really have to work on the stuff that wasn't there before. And it's that hard catch up as they're also working on the jumps. There were a lot of under rotations in her, especially her free skate. I thought so many of the jumps were under rotated, um, not called, but you know, that's something that they're gonna have to keep working well, on. Well, it's just one of those things, you know. I, I'm not saying that she's making the Olympics. I'm not saying that it, it's impossible, but they have a lot of work to do for next year. But I think that they at least, I at least saw for the first time glimpses that they're doing work with her. And this is the thing, it, it happens in opera all the time. Someone comes back, oh, I have a new technique, a new coach, a new whatever, it's totally changed. And you hear them and you're like, I don't know, sounds the same to me. And we see that in skating all the time. You know, um, pub publicity talking about these transformations. And then when you see the actual skating, you think this looks the same. This was an actual step in the right direction and actually made me think she might make the Olympic team. She does have a running. I think it's possible. Right? Yeah, where I didn't think it was possible in the- in I don't the know if it's probable, but I think that it's possible, right? I yeah. think it depends on how much work they put in. I, look, she's incredibly naturally talented. Yes, the technique has a lot of work to do and they're fighting what her, the way that she taught herself to rotate. I think that it's possible 
But again, it's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be really smart music choices, really effective. This yeah. kind of schlock that she did is not going to pass muster uh, to make the Olympics because every other uh, you know, lady in the competition is going to be really pushing you know, for that right. as well. So, right. and I think that we will see her performances. I have to say, I even like still watching Gracie Gold, I thought, I hate this music choice, the war on my mind. And I thought, okay, next year, Gracie needs something that doesn't have to deal with we're at war, nothing to do with yeah. like what used L to be. Lift, lift up the mood, yeah. I would like Gracie to choose her own music and write an essay on why she wants to do each piece of music um, because I do not see any connection to her in the performance. Uh, yeah. But I was watching her, I was like, you know, she's still the most talented lady in the event. Oh, <laughs> no one has the in inherent spring that, that she just has. Even just like the way, like the stroking around the ice, I was like, she is the most talented right. in this entire competition. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think for Gracie, look, the flip has never been her job to do the flip at the end of the program. Like, I mean, think of all the times that the flip was, you know, the problem in the short program or the problem in the free skate. To do that at the end, I don't understand. It, at the 14 Olympics, you know, I mean. I think it's time for Gracie to get a coach who doesn't need her, doesn't want to push her because actually, yes, she had a bad performance here. But the one thing that I was impressed is it was the first time that she looked mad as though she felt she really could do it. You know, there was a defeat mm. quality to her when she got off the ice. In the short program, it looked like she knew that she could do it for the right. first time, right? Like that this was annoying to her because she knew she could do it. And I think she's so, yes, she's like in the standings as far, but she's close to where to get in it, right? Like right. she's not so far right. to where I think a, a change, uh, like a, a putting in all the work over the summer, like she is now like so close to where she needs to get. And I think that it's way more possible for her to at least, whether she makes the Olympics or not, finish her career in a way that is really um, strong. So yeah, uh, and, and I think, and we were talking about this on the CLI, but something that is uplifting instead yeah. of look how sad and damaged I've been. And mm -hmm. here's some music that shows you that and here's it wearing on me. And I thought, you know, the point being, you're hearing that narrative every day. If it is a constant narrative of your music being positive and up and energized, it will give you such a different feeling that, oh, I may feel good today, but I'm gonna go in and skate to this music that tells me how terrible everything has been constantly. I mean, like, or in my mind, okay, Jonathan, that is. And we know there is, so maybe don't overindulge it by then listening. Who doesn't have a war music, in their mind? Okay? Everyone has a war in their mind. It's a mental sport, okay? So yeah. that yeah. it's, there is not a skater in that event who does not have a war in their mind going on, okay? At right. some point in time during the year, so. Right, uh, and we've indulged that feeling publicly perhaps enough and I would love to just see an empowering music choice from her. Other music choices, Mariah Bell. Jonathan. Yeah, now I now in the short program, I would have had Karen ahead of Mariah. I would have as well. Yeah. Um this was a tough watch. We predicted this last week based on how the season was going. I have to say when she finished in fifth place, I saw a nod of resignation from her that mm. it was almost how they expected it to go. Yeah. And she's one where I often wonder if the Raphael technique is fighting her, especially she and Eric Schoberg, it looks like they fight the technique and she was really on her left side in the air a lot over the weekend. And Even at Skate America, that was already starting to happen, it seemed. Like, it seemed not like she was off this weekend. It seems like she's been off. And she mustered it through at Skate America, but when you really go look at those performances, they weren't stellar performances, even though she came out on top. Yeah, it was, it was tough, and I think that they wanted to give it to her. Would have happened. And now I yeah. think 
she has to have a reckoning moment because they still named her an alternate uh, for the world team. But you have to look at it and say, is she gonna make the Olympics or is this gonna be one of those skaters who is destined to finish fourth at Olympic trials or third at Olympic trials if they have two spots, right? right. Like, is she- Just one out. Yeah, is this becoming that story? And that's gonna be hard for her, I think, because this, now you have to be like, okay, the pressure was on me and I didn't deliver. And then you kind of have to look at, are you gonna change that narrative? Or are you go, is this gonna become a thing? And that's that's a hard spot to be in. But yeah, um, you know, there it's it's possible for her, right? I mean, we talk about Alyssa Liu, it's possible for Mariah Bell, it's possible for you know she. And some people were sort of surprised she wasn't at least first alternate. But I, I I think at this point you can't rely on these programs and what's happening technically at the moment. You can't. It, it has shown that you can't. If there is a world championships, I find it hard to believe she'd be able to turn this around by then. This reminded me a bit of the Nancy Kerrigan era, and we see this consistently in U.S. national, where they will help you one last time, right? Mm. And last year, she had the moment of nationals. She didn't get it. Skate America, they kind of give you the bump, right? Yeah. And in the short, I felt they tried to give her the bump here. Like, in that small margin over Karen, I felt this was an indicator that they, they were going to show up. If you can at least do the free we'll put you a little ahead in the in the short to help you out. This is the Mirai moment at 2013 Nationals. This is the the Agnes Zawadzki. In the free, they stopped helping as much and they couldn't help as much. Right. That's what happens and then they don't name you to the world team. So it seems like with some skaters, they will help you and help you and then boom. And this- And one of the few situations where every single judge had her in the exact same spot. You know, some people had Karen and Amber switched and Alyssa and some people switched. Mariah, everyone, just put her in fifth. There was nothing you could do. It was, it was it was a tough performance and it was one of those things, everyone knew it and they wanted to give it to her. And yeah, she looked gorgeous. I thought the dress was beautiful, like all this sort of stuff. The, the program never did it for me and I maybe it never did it for her. And they changed the program so many times. And that's, we saw that that's the, the Hubble and Donahue thing. I mean, how many times have they changed some of those free dances that we, right. the last, uh, not this season, but the, the two seasons prior. So if it takes that much constant picking at, I think it's time to just mm -hmm. try something else. Yeah. So, hmm. <sighs> um, but I thought Amber Glenn. Amber Glenn. <laughs> Amber Glenn. <laughs> we called it. It is her time. I, what I really liked about Amber was that unlike the other ladies in the event, she rotated her jumps in the air and you could see it. And then lands with plenty of time to spare. Yeah, in that rotation. So while I think that she has a budget choreographer who is self-promoting and also cutting down his um, skaters and that you need to leave that because he is not your friend he is climbing for himself and not as good as he thinks he is. I think he does have talent. I think he needs to work his way up as a choreographer to ever, ever think that he could cut down his own skater in the kiss and cry. That is a giant red flag. And it is the second time we have seen it on social media, Amber. You are a better vessel than he is a choreographer. Mm, beautiful, yeah, yeah. And there is way more. I, I have to be honest, Dave. I don't know what you're talking about. What did he say? Oh my God. He was like, yes, good job, Amber, but there was stuff missing in your choreographic and step sequences. Yes, yes. Second time this season. Oh. Yeah, well, we knew about it the first. Yeah, well, I knew, I knew Misha had done it to someone earlier. I mean, that just reeks of insecurity, doesn't it? But he, he's, that's a come up of all come ups. Yeah. Mm -mm. You get rid of him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Also Amber, the judges are telling you to leave the Canes. They're telling you. And politically, that is very clear. At least they are not in favor. They might not be telling you explicitly, but that message. And 
this situation is only going to get worse because you are now in the same situation as their daughter trying to make the Olympic team. And yes, they might be selling you in a meeting right now at an airport saying, yes, we can push to make the Olympics together. But when push comes to shove in July and August, who do you think their attention is going to be on? That extra energy at night to make the Olympic team? Do you think- Well, and imagine that power play shift of returning with Amber Silver and Ashley's bronze. I'm yeah, imagining that creates that. They're both off the world team, so it doesn't matter. It's not like Amber's going to worlds and they're not, right? That right. would be the real kicker. So in my mind, they're almost in the same situation. Okay. Who are they going to put the attention on and the effort on? And I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's their daughter, okay? Right. And it's right. you against them. You just become the nice cheerleader in that point. And I think it's a mistake if Amber is in that situation. Mm -hmm. I think Amber Glenn had two options. I think we can go Robbie Walia. But I think, you know, she's a Texan girl in Canada, but I think Robbie would be a match for her. He, because, because we've seen him work with Caitlin, and actually there is something similarly explosive and big about Amber's jumping technique. But I have another idea. Okay. What if she did? Christy Ness with David Glynn. Okay. With help from Rudy. Who we love and mental coach, Paulina Edmonds. <laughs> Excuse me. I have never met anyone more convinced of their own power in my life than Paulina. Who also kind of did it as an outsider and in her own way, Amber is the outsider among this group. Yeah. I believe that Christy Ness who I've heard was like the OG of Terry in terms of discipline in the rink, in terms of the run-throughs. I think she will have that triple axle like butter. Like, and look, Christy didn't have the natural ability that Amber does for the axle and the natural, right. and it is so right. close. Christy Ness has discipline, Jonathan. She has just force. She has power. She has- Interesting, I've never really oh. thought of that. I always thought like Jenny should have gone there. Hmm. Yes, yes. Christy Ness, Amber Glenn. Interesting, interesting. Some David Glynn and Amber Glenn. Oh my God, like Phil Hirsch could write an article about their names. Like <laughs> <laughs> in some alphabet, it's the same letter or something. Right? Amazing, amazing. Um, Hilarious. I feel it. Feeling. Yeah, be like some Karen Kwan action with Amber Glenn for choreography, like a Karen and Rudy. It was interesting because, like, uh, first of all, long hair Karen Kwan moment where you could be like, "Come on, all right." I'm just telling you because Amber, especially in the free, was hitting, especially in the the opening segments, some very beautiful poses that she, clearly she has also been working on those things and the the Axel, as she told us in the Kiss and Cry, I think only a hundred times during the short program, that she was doing great triple axles on the warm-ups. Um, but I think it was a smart move for her to forego it in the long. Yes. Um, but yeah, she intrigued me more Benny than she had ever does. If you recall. Say it one more time. Benny Kirk and I had an argument over that, if you recall. She wanted Amber to do it, and I said no. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a tough, and it's interesting. I wonder if Amber, Amber needed one more backup solid competition, I think, and they could have considered her for Worlds, but I right. The tour. I would have given I mean, You would have. I would have. Okay, now this is I would have of, thought about it. I would have meditated on it. I would have thought on it. And here's why. Almost every jump in Karen Chen's free skate was cheated at the same Although, except for that, um, the double axle triple toe, I thought when she first started, I was like, whoa, this is some of the cleanest I'd ever seen her. And then inevitably it started coming back. But it was also the most beautiful free skate and the most senior free skate and the most polished and the most stunning. And I think she should keep it in the entire event. Yeah. But at the same time, when you're trying to get spots for the Olympics, there was, there were very few rotated jumps to be found. And that is the one thing that stood out to me about Amber is, uh, 
what am I left thinking about nationals in the ladies? Could a girl rotate a triple? Can we rotate a triple in the air? Okay. I've never seen it in such in such depth to be a consistent problem like that. I mean, it was everyone was doing that. But also talking about the international judges, they always go for Karen. They do. really do like her. Like I remember even Karen like herself her. was surprised at NHK when she saw, I think in the short, they really pumped her up. Um, I think so it would have been a more understandable situation had they had a four continents, right? And if you send both yeah. Amber and Karen to four continents, they get that experience, they get that opportunity. Without it, it does, because this would be so easy. If you had Junior Worlds, you'd send Lindsay Thorngren. You'd send Karen Chen, right? Easy, peasy, right? For Four Continents, Amber, Tom Z is gonna have Brady go. And uh, and Tom Z, Amber, and uh, Karen. You know, it, quite easy that the, it, it's themselves, unfortunately. And yeah. maybe you have Brady Rest and you send Mariah Bell to Four Continents or something, right? That you could do that as well, but. Yeah, I, we needed, um, and obviously I know Amber fell out of the whatever therapy bed she was in or whatever before Skate America. Had she, had she shown up at Skate America and been able to deliver a quality performance and then back it up at Nationals with this performance, I think they would be able to trust in her ability a little bit more. But she's been getting better throughout the season. You know, yeah. each time we see her, and I think, I don't know, I want to reward the person that has making the ch made the changes in their life and pushed forward. And, and someone like Amber, especially when she has been fighting for so long to get it together, and she finally did this year, and then to not send her to Worlds, I'm thinking, wait, are we chopping off the one talent at the knees, the one person that we should be really encouraging because we ask these skaters to make positive changes and she made positive changes in her own life, gets to this, has been so motivated this year and then we chop her at the knees before Worlds. I think that's a mistake. Mm. Judges like, okay. I, I'm looking at that and my vote is going Amber because I'm looking at where people need to be, where their potential is. I think if we keep pushing Amber to be positive for another full year of her training, like she needs to train, I'm looking at what can she achieve in a year. And I love Karen's skating. I think she had the most, two most beautiful programs in the event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know that her max is that much higher than what we saw here. Now that I agree with, that I agree with. Whereas Amber, if she was able to put in that flip Euler Saukau, I mean, that number would only get bigger. But I do think the judges internationally, deserved or undeserved, may hose Amber on the PCS, where we know they always like to help Karen. Okay, so that's one take, but what if Shinamano is the caller for the Olympics? Then, then we're toast, yeah. And what's going to happen with the Russian girls? Is there a conspiracy not to let that man be the caller of the ladies' event? What do we have to do? Okay. Yeah. yeah, if the Russian Federation had their way, he'd never do it again. So. I feel like we haven't seen a lot of Shin in the last time. Since the Mao Yuna days. How come, what has happened to Shin? Okay. Right. Apparently he's a very nice man. He's just very. Um, he calls it like he sees it. And he sees all of these under rotations that indeed are happening. To me, he's, they're, they're picky calls, but they're not wrong. Yes. He would have exploded watching this group of ladies. Yeah. Save Amber. Yeah. Now, how about our hack and sack girl? Jonathan, I have to tell you, over the last couple of weeks, I see Lindsay Thorngren's coach in passing when I'm, you know, putting my skates on and I'm like, how's it going? And I'm trying to like read the room, you know, there's right, right. <laughs> Yulia has an intensity to her, right? <laughs> I was, like, was not sure how this was going to happen. She's like, no, she will, she will be good. She will be good. I was like, oh, okay. When Lindsay <laughs> missed, I, I think in Lindsay's mind, they probably thought she'd be seventh, right? Here, like they were probably hoping for higher, but realistically in your heart being like, yeah, I'll probably be seventh, right? So I think getting to that final group was exciting and nervy, right? Yes, yes. Seeing her do like a twizzle out of a double axle was surprising. I did that is not a girl who does something like that. And then this is the second jump, and I thought, oh my God, what are we seeing? This is not who this girl is. And then 
she fought back. And I was like, oh, thank God. Yulia would have had a heart attack. I don't know like what would have happened. We would have had some like. <laughs> it, it got dark. It got dark for her in that tree. Now, here's the thing. I, who looks at this like lovely skater with these lovely light qualities, great jumps, on the, and then gives her this oppressively heavy, it was a total mismatch, I thought. I thought the choreography didn't help her. I thought the music was totally the wrong choice. And I thought the costume was absolutely atrocious. I can say that because I don't see the coach at the rink. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in. On, she's wearing like heavy velvet curtains, just drowning alive to a music about a biblical whore. I, I mean, again, totally inappropriate for the junior champion coming in. She needed something light, beautiful. Go classical. I guess I gotta tell you, man, do we miss classical music? Nobody skates to it ever. Give her this beautiful like Debussy piano or something. Put her in a light blue and let her be effervescent and wonderful. So Julia, there you go, Dave. There you go. <laughs> Are you praying? <laughs> it was Jonathan. Not me. I said that. I said that. that's on me. That's just that's just on me. And I am not coaching this talent. So I that's just an outsider's opinion. But it's just I seems to be shared by everyone else as well. Oh yeah. It was Jonathan Yulia. <laughs> I take it. I'll take it. And again, this isn't about the skater because I think the skater has lovely inherent qualities. I just think that they like put together a formula that had nothing to do with the skater in front. Julia, you're a very scary girl. Also, just revisit what I told you in the video critiques that I sent you. I don't think that Jonathan is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, a, it's just a, you know, it, it, it's like when we've seen other, like Christina Gao, who back in the day, I thought had like these lovely like qualities and they would put these like outrageously heavy music selections on top of her that wouldn't match, but. I think my soul is re-entering my body, Jonathan. I think it's re-entering. Okay, okay. Just like it re-entered hers halfway through the free skate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hold an edge. No, <laughs> bye. -bye. <laughs> I think that we are not. Um, I, yes. Yes. I think that Lindsay should pick something young, the young voice. Yeah. Otherwise, we're at the risk of making this girl the next Brady Tunnell. And I think there is personality in there. I just yes. think she's a strong personality of a coach, and we need to let it out. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to see a coach's personality or choreographer's personality. I want to see the skaters. Okay. Now, we have to say one thing about the Mitchell Johansson Method girls. They love to run programs there. My God, do we need to get a skating skills teacher in the building. Okay. We, we say or a that. therapist. A therapist could also bring down those shoulders and the tension, I feel. I think it's both. Okay. Yeah. The skating skills, these are clearly people who train, who work hard. Very, they are prepared. However, they look like they are skating on stilts. Yeah. And it is so glaring. <laughs> with the ladies they had here. And we said it with Ross Minor all the time, Stephen Carrier, like they just need to get into their knees and ankles. And uh, I don't know that, that, that Mark or Peter excelled in that area. They were very more, especially Mark was very consistent and hit beautiful pictures, but the knees and ankle thing, not um, the area. I just get the sense that like from the sternum up, those girls are so hoisted, hoisted up. And then they skate and, and then the whole center of gravity goes up and this is just inherently unattractive. And I believe they work hard too, but I think it's just like hitting their head against the wall. I, Cause you know, there's inherent talent there that's not being released or let. It's being forced and look. Yeah. Gabby Izzo went through that triple triple with the loop and I was like, that is a strong girl. Okay. Like, yeah. holy moly. Okay. But that was, that is a fighter. Okay. That is, um, also Audrey Shin had a, you know, she worked her tail off in that free skate, but a rough nationals was for her. But I have to think there are way more eyes on her coming in here after skating. Yeah. And I think that this is a, an adjustment uh, to that. But again, it was like a Karen Chen protocol with those, and they actually called her under, which makes 
we think that they were real bad. When you look at right. her protocol for the fact that they actually um, called those uh, jumps there. So, yeah. Well, so there you go. Let's move along. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Julia, it was Jonathan. Okay, and, but Jonathan, he's an opera singer. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, okay. The word whore, like really, you know. Oh, Biblical, my. that's not about her. That's about the story of Dolly Lott. I mean, the priest tells like the most famous prostitute he can to get, get Samson to cut his hair, come on. Dolly Lott? You're the only one I've ever heard it put the emphasis on that syllable. Oh, sorry, the opera. The opera is Samson and Dolly Lott. Human. The, like, it's French. It's the French champagne music they're saying. Small champagne taste. I have not heard him say Dolly Lott before. <laughs> That's so, technically the name of the piece. Why didn't the Schumanns have cutouts? I didn't see Del Pellegrini have been cut out. Ugh, it was so sad. Okay. We saw Peggy Fleming had one. We saw yeah. Jeremy Abbott's mom, Georgine, had one. We saw, and then I think there was a Christy Yamaguchi one also. I didn't see Christy. I thought maybe, it, but here's the thing. It was very distracting sometimes in the spins. I don't know if the camera was told to include those so everyone could feel like they were seeing themselves, but often I found myself Nathan, looking up there. Nathan's agent had a go Nathan sign. It made me think, do they change the cutouts for each discipline? And there next was to a go Vincent sign. They were sitting next to each other, those two cutouts. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> there, was, uh, there were Krieger studio cutouts I was seeing. Oh yes. so. To the point about the camera angles here, <clears throat> consistently they tried to zoom in so much on the opening segment for each skater, which was a total mismatch because I think in the beginning most programs try to create a big picture and they didn't allow us that so that was disappointing. I loved that they kept showing us jumps in slow-mo from different angles. That was incredible because often you would get a totally new perspective, which is of course what we all know happens, but they were actually showing us those varying angles, which I, I found very helpful. Yes. Okay. Let's go into the pairs. Mm. You know, our spicy strong girl, beet red, Alexa Semeca Kinnearum was champion for the fourth time. Okay. She is either America's Michelle Kwan or Jennifer Robinson. I am not sure which, <laughs> let me tell you. She is an American champion, okay? That is the most apple pie girl of all time. Um, that was a gutsy performance. And I love when Alexa gets a score and unabashedly is like cheering in the kiss and cry. Because she I, should, yes, of course. You know those other pair girls are hating it and <laughs> take a moment. And, I, and you know, Brandon was just genuinely shocked and she was I, just in full blown party mode. I would have been too. Listen, Brandon told us that Alexa has a kind heart, okay? And I believe- And she dresses like one in the short program. So. I believe that Brandon has to live at home with Alexa. And I think he delivered a good performance here. <laughs> and I think he's gonna live another day, <laughs> okay? Yeah, I think, exactly, amazing. Like any pair girl, you know you are on the edge, okay? And I thought, I thought Lori did the good work for Alexa. I think that um, Alexa did send Lori a Christmas card, I would imagine. I thought that Lori was honest and yet, um, you know, zero GOE for the triple toe, double toe. I might've gone a little lower just because of the space and it was a little swingy, but I thought it was, you know, we held on. And it's interesting in both warmups, I got nervous for Alexa cause she was struggling as she warmed up the side by sides. And then in the short sheet, they um, both had such lovely ride out and the, and the jump landings um, had taken a big, I was gonna say step forward, but that's weird terminology. They, they improved a, a lot. I noticed. I believe on a previous show, we discussed how they needed to have more interaction with each other. And I was laughing to myself in the uh, short program because it almost looked like they had choreographed moments where Alexa was looking at him. Like even in the lift exit or the mini lift, she turns her head and looks him in the eye. And I was like, there is a girl who is paying attention, okay? Yes, I think so. They are working on this connection. He still looks like her brother's friend skating with her, but, um, it, uh, look, 
technically they were so and that's and that's just something to think about as they approach material for next season it yeah. doesn't have to be romantic yeah uh, I still am obsessed with that big back three turns she does at uh, the first uh, the throw triple sow cat like obsessed okay I yeah. just love it in the free it's a simple move, but I think it just looks like a million dollars. Um, the lips, the lips are lovely. The twist is good. Uh, I think we'll only barrel, get better. She got a little close to the wall on the death spiral. I think you know that they can do that better. But I have to think. You know, a pair girl who shall remain nameless <laughs> pointed out that KMT gave them like you know how they're, all the pairs pretend like they're good friends. You know. Right. <laughs> And you know, KMT likes to be seen as nice. <laughs> and she gave an applause and someone was like, KMT, this is a girl who if you mess up and she do well, she does well, she could beat you. Like, yes, yes. And it was interesting because we were talking about how the USFS was kind of looking for a team that could equal KMT. Like they knew that that was kind of a goal that would be a huge achievement for them. Um, I think they have one. Yeah. Yeah, that has inherently more exciting moments, even if the overall base is still, you know, coming up. I think there's an intangible energy and excitement about certain certain parts of Alex and Brandon skating that could I would far prefer over I KMT. Do and think that they did the opposite of what I wanted for the short program. And I will note it. Okay. Lexi, you can yell at me if you want, but I feel the second half of the program should be the original Lincoln Park instead of whatever that, I don't know if that was stuff that Hugo wrote or, or uh, music there, but I think it could go big. And I think that, look, you're not gonna have the romantic chemistry of you and Chris, but you could have exciting edge to you. I know Brandon doesn't look like an edgy boy, but you can be edgy and he can be a penis. But he has strength. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to do. Maybe put guy liner on Brandon. I don't know. No. Kidding. Uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I don't know what we do about Brandon. He he looks like I don't know the paper boy. I feel like he plays like little league in the backyard. He just looks well. Like, it's this inherently like boy next door, all American guy. Like he's got that thing going. Can we put facial hair on him? Like I think we need options. Okay. Can we look at like Brandon and one of those apps and feel like what we could do to make him look a little bit less fish? <laughs> you know. Amazing. Didn't there used to be like computer apps with like makeovers where we can like be like? People had done it with Jason Brown for a long time about what he would look like with shorter hair. We have to no. figure out what to do with Brandon. Okay, because uh, he is with a really strong girl. He is delivering, but I think that we can make him more of a part of this, okay? But I have to say their overall packaging, just the costumes and everything like this, it just gives you the feeling you're dealing with a top pair. I thought it was refined, simple, for him, but elegant, and she looked like a million bucks. I thought it was really great. They need some transitions for next year, but they mastered their elements in the first year, and that's commendable, right? Like they yeah. have their elements down, they have unique lift exits, their jumps are steady. So now for next year, I think they can add the components. And I think that that is yeah. gonna be, look, Alexa, the one thing I was missing this year is you know my favorite move in your program last year was, I mean, come on, where was it? <laughs> where was it? Amazing. <laughs> but it was an exciting, and talk about an exciting debut. Conversely. Which everybody let them have, right? The other pairs were just resigned to letting them have it. I feel like Jessica Cowling is at risk of becoming the next Amanda Evora. And what mm. I mean by this is most beautiful girl in the band, most beautiful, um, like lift positions I've like ever seen in my life, right? Fabulous twist, best twist of the event, or one of them. And you're just like, just these like side-by-side -side jumps and elements, like the most beautiful hair I've ever seen in a human being, right? <laughs> and could skate to any music, you know, the most gorgeous skin I've ever seen in my life. Oh my God, like Jessica and, and, and ass pants, like, what, what was going on? This was like, this was their moment to have a strong second. And this is this is the last time that they will help this pair. This is the last, yeah. okay. Yeah. How did Lori, okay, so her components. Lori yeah. put them second. Okay, so this is this is how you read it. Lori said 998759875. I believe they might've sent her a Christmas card. If not, Jenny and Todd did. 
You know, Lori's old, yeah. she's old school. She remembers when Jenny and Todd had two months in the calendar and Kyoko had one. Okay. Right. Um, or, um, <laughs> that's a fact, by the way, I had that calendar. Um, 1996, 1997. Um, all right. So, or it was 97 calendar. Okay. So uh, for skating, she went the other pair, she went 875, 85, 85, 875, 875. So they are, you know, not, doing um, Ashley and Tim any favors. Uh, in terms of Ashley and Tim, there were things that looked better. I mean, that throw lots, we harp on it all the time and it was better here. And these top three teams all do work with Elton John, you know, Mosher, uh, I think a couple times a week. I do think overall though, I don't know what more Ashley and Tim can really do for next season. It was an unusual thing to see. You know, Ashley often struggles on her side-by-side -side jumps, but I, it was unusual to see Tim have the issue with the loop here. Yeah. Um, again, I don't know that like that was the issue. It's, it was an inherent, I don't know. And I have never in my life heard a more offensive cut of the Rachmaninoff at the end, because they, this is just how you know the type of person you're dealing with because we were about to get to the most amazing climactic moment of the entire concerto and they cut it. And then I thought, wow, is this some weird time thing? And then instead they cut to another section where they just put it on a loop and it repeated eight times in a row to fill time. And I was like, what are you, what are you doing? You just could have let the music keep playing and give it the climax. And it just tells me what a disconnect there is somewhere in that in that creative process for them. In the words of Luann de Lesseps, money can't buy you class, Jonathan. Clearly. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was it was tough. That's a I, I, the house. <laughs> okay. Anyhow. I got it. I got it. And it's real. I it's, know I mean, there are people around the world who will not know that show that'll think, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, USFS is not interested in helping. They they made that clear. They're not gonna. They're, they're not there to help. Another team at the beginning of the quad. They were consistent when Chris had his wrist issues, and they were changing coaches. And right. They were a placeholder. Could yes. they make it to the Olympics as a second pair? Yes, but Jessica and Brian have more natural gifts that they just need to figure out this competition under pressure. And again, internationally, I don't, the judges don't go for them either. Yeah, I do, they do go for like a so. clear message to go train with Jenny and Todd in that environment. That would be very helpful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Audrey and Misha, I thought they looked a little better, but. Did you, or did you think that Misha grew like two inches and then kept the same costume? I was like, this looks like a, <laughs> Like we remember, this is an old costume for them. And I was like, what is happening? And like, it looks like, it, it looked like he was wearing his like little brother's outfit. Um, and it, like, it kept riding up and he looked uncomfortable and like, it looked like the armpits were gripping. And that's serious. If you're a Paris guy, you've got to have like flexibility of motion in there and not be worried about your entire midsection showing, you know, but some really fun moments. I feel like I have a day off from work and I've been like a really nice mood because I feel relaxed for like most of my life. John is just going, like, love it. <laughs> love it. They're still good people. They're still lovely skaters. It's just, you know, time to go a size up. It happens. What else do you want to do? in every size. What would you do about Olivia and Mervyn's lifts, Jonathan? What do you think about that? I think maybe we could go to a hypnotist, like um, a therapist. Like, so apparently that's- now, where they. They were training in Jenny and Todd's old rink in California, right? And they're in the old rink before the one that they're in now, there's like a dip in the ice allegedly, according to some oh. skaters. And in the same spot, they fell twice when he got concussions. And she looks very uncomfortable in her lift position still, but it's the third year. And it's, you know, it's, it's getting- It's not a team I'm investing in. Well, it's not new to pairs anymore. so. Right. They've got to figure that out. You know, it's 
because they went behind Emily and Spencer. I mean, that Emily Chan is lovely. Emily, I love your skating, but if you ever wear those tight ankles on your boots again, Emily, <laughs> okay? That is unforgivable, okay? It, you had such a beautiful color dress. It was so stunning. You looked so great up until the ankle, Emily Chan. And get rid of the man bun on Spencer. He could have like an expensive haircut. Oh my God, this was just- But see, I have to say, I have, because Mervyn has, you know, he had the world bronze when he was representing Japan. Mm -hmm. I would have gone the Japan route. He didn't want to give up. I would have tried to find, I know, I, but I would have tried to, to go and find a Japanese partner and make sure I went to the Olympics that way. Right. Well, would have been my personal take. You know what? Mervyn is a stubborn, complicated person, as we have okay. <laughs> But an intelligent guy, intelligent guy. And perhaps in a world where intelligence is not valued, okay? It's true, it's true. <laughs> it might have been a hindrance to him, okay? He might have thought too critically about the citizenship issue, okay? And yeah, think about the Japanese money he could, but you know what? If he marries Olivia, that family has multiple homes, okay? okay so, he, so you can you know, either get the money from the ice or, you know. We all make choices. He's yeah. living a good life, okay? He's okay, good for him. Good dating for him. partner, he lives like in the North Jersey area, you know, into the New York, New Jersey area. You know, he's winning, okay? He's got a good haircut for the event, like, the Serafini seem very nice. Everyone always likes them. Have, like no one talks shit on them, which is a miracle in skating. So I think he's doing okay. He doesn't look like he hates his partner. It might be less exciting for the viewer that when, you know, you never knew if we were gonna watch like an explosive domestic with him and Marissa, but you right. know. Right. <laughs> it's nice and boring. It's good boring, right? Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Well, let's move on to the ice dance event because really this event was about two teams, a dress that looked like it had blood on the center of it and Michael yes. looking like a male gigolo. Okay, this was quite mm, the mm. of the rest. I mean, what an event. All right, let it out, John. Where to begin, where to begin. Okay, first oh my let's God. talk. Oh my God, our favorite technical specialist, our favorite. Queen Judy Bloomberg. Okay. Oh, we love. I'm telling you, and I know I say it every time. Everyone go back to 84 and watch that Shahrazad. Oh my when when she just falls down, like his body, it's just sensational. We love Klamova and Pomarenko, but Judy was robbed. And you know she was. She was. I enjoy that she takes that bitterness into every international call that she does, as she should. Okay. It is yes, she because she was a genius. That was a, an incredible program. And I like that she and her partner seem to get along. Not at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you watch this. he, the good friend of Sandra Bezik. I think he designs interiors of homes. He came up with their beautiful programs, the whole- Artists world. through and through. Yeah, exactly. He needs to go to dinner with Michael Seabird. He lives in like West Jeff, okay? With a pandemic, yeah. okay? We'll invite, you know, people, all right? Yeah, yeah, we love that. We love that, he's fancy, right? He's great. So, okay, so first, before we get into the Chalk and Bates Hubble Donahue discussion, I have to say, I was very, pleased by the, yes, she looked like, there's an opera called Lucia de Lammermoor and she comes out and she's murdered her husband at the wedding. And so she always carries this like dagger and her wedding dress is just covered in blood. And I was like, oh, are they doing a Lucia program? <laughs> because that is in fact what the dress looked like. Um, but I have to say, I really liked it. For a while, I thought even their position as third was, was in danger. Mm -hmm. um, from Pomerenko. And it was really nice to see some infused innovation again. They had some really cool rotational lift moments. They had some really, um, th there are limitations how far this team can go, I think, but they're doing the best with what they have. And they, they created some really unique moments that was distinctively them. And I, so I was thrilled, thrilled for them. I mean, she's a DJ like Paris Hilton now. She is just feeling the music. And I, I think they did this was a yeah. 
inspired uh, performance. I yeah. just want to give one shout out because before we go into Michael Parsons, but the Prince edit, right? There is a gymnastics floor team that is having like a little bit of a moment. And it is um, by Soraya Hawthorne at the University of Georgia. There was a whole article about it. Her name is Soraya, is S-O-R-A-Y-A, Hawthorne, H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E. And it was choreographed by Stella Ume, who I got at the University of Georgia to hire based on my uh, persistent um, personality. And Stella Ume <laughs> is one who um, might be also lovingly referred to as Hey Dave, who's that black girl in your Instagram stories? Jonathan, Stella taught us the importance of leading with our boob, leading with your boob. Remember, I, I had a little uh, moment on Instagram this week of uh, choreographing. I love those, yeah, I love those. Stella was that black girl uh, in front of okay. her, uh, her refrigerator who's telling us to go in like Celine Dion and lead with our boob out. And um, <laughs> Stella, she's amazing. So, and okay, well, amazing. Just, okay. So there was a, yeah, there was an article about it that, and I was like, oh, this is, I'll, was, I'll put it in the in the uh, description box. So, oh, nice. okay. And, and 17 people will ask, where do I find that link anyway? But it'll be in the description. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, anyway, let's, um, <laughs> the Michael Parsons free dance is so infectious. <laughs> I mean, I forget that the partner is there. It is just like Torval and Dean where the all eyes are on him. And <laughs> it makes me just crack up. They need to keep this program. For another it's season. fun, it's fun, yeah. You hate it. You know, I just wonder, cause I think they would be fifth had Pomeranko been there, right? I find it, it, it hard, it may be hard for them to maintain that fourth you base position. Pomeranko better than them? Better than his hip wiggle? No, I mean, I love his hip wiggle, <laughs> but I just think- um, Jonathan, you had the tone like you were about to call him a good communicator, okay? I felt no, it. No, because he's good, you know, he's he's got like a good like performer energy, but I wonder if they go for the skating skills of a Ponomarenko more. But I happen to be more entertained by by Parsons every time. I find Ponomarenko to be a little bit stiff, actually. I, I do as I well. And like very old fashioned Igor, I feel like at least uh, Michael Parsons is current. Yeah, giving you something fresh. Yeah, I mean, out of the box, if you will, knows where every camera is, okay? Yeah, and they should, and they should. It's like he's flirting with each and every viewer, a matinee on it, if you will. <laughs> That's right, That's right. Uh, Okay, let's get into the top two in Madison Hubble's costume, Jonathan, I've never been more convinced that a costume mattered than in the rhythm dance here. Yeah. And listen, I understand that it was too burlesque. I understand, but that's not, that's not even burlesque. I don't understand. Like, um, I know Jenny was a little bit confused by Zach's outfit, but Zach's outfit made sense to me. That goes with like, that like sexy dancing bartender vibe of a burlesque moment. The dress, when it actually detracts from the skating skills, which I do think they have far and beyond the best skating skills of any ice dancer in the US. I just don't, I don't know what you're doing. Why is sometimes they're digging in their heels to just continue with these choices. Jenny had an interesting point that she thinks that Hubble is owning her power because people are always criticizing her for being more muscular or for having these outfits. And she, that's why I love her is because like, she's posing so on Instagram like this or in a public restroom or uh, whatever other modeling shots we have. And then every costume they wear is like, look at me. And they are not using Matthew Caron. Um, which is suggested by their coaching staff um, and they choose to go this direction. And I have to say that it's the kind of thing where I didn't even, I was in a meeting when um, the rhythm dance was going on and I could just see <laughs> the notifications popping up with photos of that costume being sent and not in a yeah. good, not in a positive way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they do, have 10 times of this natural uh, skating skills of the second team. But I have to say- The speed, the ice coverage, yeah. But Chuck and Bates have stronger have stronger partnering skills in hold for me. And yes, maybe okay. 
it is also a trick to have him do more of the leading. I do think that chalk skating, her glide has inherently gotten better since going to Montreal and in their uh, skating skill technique, which is more of the French British technique. I think it does work for them more uh, certainly than uh, Spielbahn's technique ever did, especially for her. And I think that they are in hold more and they're with their chemistry. And I think uh, Tanith made so many astute comments. In She's so great. She was saying how we haven't seen them in a year. So even though they're doing the same material, it doesn't feel like we've watched it for two years and we're not sick of it because it still feels fresh and they have a new costume and a new look. And I was like, yes, and it does look polished. And they were performing the shit out of it, especially yeah. that rhythm dance. But I kind of felt that this was gonna be Hubble and Donahue's year. I said it on the, I think I said it at the beginning of the season. I felt, I said it when we saw their free dance and we didn't see Chuck and Bates knowing that they were out of competition for uh, out of training for a while. And then seeing um, before the event, I, I, I said it again, I, I'm not shocked that the event wound up this way. It yeah. does feel like the right result because I think for Hubble and Donahue to work this hard, they had a good free dance this year not my favorite, but it was a song. No, but, but greatly improved that allowed you to reward them justly for their huge, powerful, amazing skating. And I just love their twizzles with the leg out. Like there's, their twizzles have such a whew, kind of impact compared to some of the others, especially obviously when errors are made. Um, and I didn't mind her, instead I minded his costume in the free dance, which was so ill-colored and bagging in a strange area. Um, I will say they went safe as all hell in the free dance, but for Madison Hubble, maybe safe is not a bad thing, <laughs> Jonathan, okay? Yeah, and safe your... allows you to reward them. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. To me, she will always be that girl that skated with her brother in the original dance and had the, cr the booty shorts that were like, oh my God, like they are siblings and you're watching them. Right. <laughs> 2010 right. National or... No, that was, it was 2009, was the nine or 08? It must've been 08, 08. Who know? who remembers? It was the country Western one where, where Madison and Kiefer did, I think it was the one when, Tan, yeah, 2008, the year that Tanith and Ben did the Cotton Eye Joe. I think that is the, is that the year that Hubble and Hubble did like, and she had the booty shorts on skating with her brother and everyone was like, oh my God, look away, right? Yeah. Um, and here we are in 2021 talking about a rhythm dance with the same issue, <laughs> you know, but the skating is sensational. Yes. The, the, the rotational lift, amazing. Like, I love these moments. I love these moments. And unfortunately, even though Janeth is absolutely right, we have not seen the Snake Charmer program over and over again, but the novelty of it was lost. No, no way, no way. Mm -mm. For me, it was. It wasn't no. as you. Know, you know what? Dunking. You're cranky as all hell. You, like, <laughs> weren't excited by Amber Glenn. We have visited. We have like. <laughs> uh uh. I'm sorry. Seeing that girl in her matching Matthew Caron mask. The that was Marie sensational. France, yeah. The muse of Marie France Loubray and Matthew Caron. She comes out with with the hair that Deanna was trying to copy, and. Just the look and her being like, I would have given her a second national title with it. It was that good. It just played out the way it was going to play out this year with the little mistakes. And I don't yeah. know, it felt like just destiny. It just, yeah. all right. I want to see what they come up with next year. They've had a whole other year. To well, see, that's the other thing. If they were, and I totally understand why they repeat it. Totally understand it. But of course, now that did have, you almost wish they had just waited on the whole thing and done that for the Olympic program. No, you wait that they come up with something even better because they had to claw their way back. I hope they do. I hope they do. I it's, a, it's a big ask to, so to top this for them. Oh my God. I also have to say the most literal choreography moment was when the, the lyric said, stumble and fall. And that one boy from Michigan literally stumbled and fell during when the knee slide moment. Dear God, that was a cringe, okay? Yeah, yeah. It a cringe. It's like God. sign language choreography, yeah. It is the kind of thing that when BuzzFeed 
and the other people are going to make fun of skating during the Olympics next season and have some cheeky fun, that clip should be in there. Yeah. That was embarrassing. Okay. No. I know what choreographer thought that that was a great idea, but they need their head extended. That was not cute. Not cute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just it was the kind Just of thing stop. where like, you know, there's the kind of thing when like you're sitting at home and you're like, did someone else just see that? That felt like you're yeah, sitting- Yeah, yeah. I do the, the fake pan to the studio audience. I'm like- <laughs> Like you're sitting at home and maybe you've had a couple and you're like- Where's Laura Shai? Where's Laura Shai to tell us what she- <laughs> <laughs> That is what I felt over there. All right. The men. The men's, the men's. I have to say, Dave, I think that that Nina Simone Sinner Man short program yes. for me, and I enjoy his free skate also, but this short program will go down for me as one of my all time favorite short programs for a man ever. Ever. There is not one move that isn't full out, completely motivated and completely with the musical idea. That, that leap and then into the backwards lunge, I, I, it was like, I, I was like, um, I had the wind knocked out of me the whole time, the whole time. I just think it's utter brilliance. And I will always eat my words because I wondered if we had maxed out on the relationship a couple of years ago between Rohin and Jason. And I was totally wrong because this is an utter masterpiece. Okay, so we need a spotlight on Alexander Ensman here. Alexander Ensman gave Brady Tunnell the 10 for interpretation in that free skate. Okay, what did he give Jason? I didn't, I don't actually know this. So maybe if he, unless he gave Jason Brown all 10s, God is not real. And this man might be friendly. Wow. What did he give him? Wow. Here, wait, let me pull it up here. Um, he was also judging the men? Yes. What judge number was he? Um, okay, for this, he is, for the men's short, he is also judge seven. No, judge six. He's judge six for the men's short and judge three for the men's long. Lori Parker was judge one. So he is, she is judge one. He gave him tens, he gave him tens. Thank God, thank God. How many tens? Uh, a 10 for composition, a 10 for interpretation, nine, seven, five. You said, wait, you said he was six or seven? He was six. Okay, so he gave a 10 for performance, 10 for composition, 10 for interpretation, nine, seven, five for skating skills and transitions. It's, what more transition do you want? Okay, you think Brady Tunnell and 925 in transitions. Brady Tunnell, what yeah. more could Jason have done? I know now, that we- who, who was judge three in the short for the men? Judge three. My God, that's a, that's that's a skating Twitter skating handle. Skating that's, has all that's a Twitter handle who has um, a lot of power. Uh, Gretchen Bonnie. Okay, she can go home because okay. she, she gave Nathan a nine five for skating skills and gave Jason a nine. And she I just think wrong. it's egregious. I think she's she wrong. Failed her she, trial judge experience at the national. She put Nathan ahead of Jason in PCS. Also, Lori, Lori Parker, you're an experienced judge. And I know that you want to prop up the right man. Now she gave a skating skills nine five for Jason, but where were the tens? What more could he have done? He got the haircut that we all want. Tracy right. shaved it off before he got here. What more could he have done for you? Nine seven five for interpretation, Lori? Come on, yeah. Parker. Did he, if that's not a ten, what is? Mark, marked, Lori, that you give Vincent So and Alexa Kinnearum. Are you kidding me, Lori Parker? Okay. Yeah, that's because she's judge number three. Well, she's judge number one. Okay. She's judge number one. She only she only gave him, you know, she loves a 0.5 difference, right? Or a 0.25. Are you kidding me? Jason Brown, that entire short program is a transition. Jason Brown, 9.5. Vincent, 9.25. Are you joking? Yeah, Are you that's joking, crazy. Lori? Come on. All right. I know that the fun, you go a little hard on you, but like, come on. Jason, Vincent, 8.75 skating skills. Jason, 9.5. 
not even a full point higher than Vincent in uh, right. skills? Are we watching the same sport? Was your mother not a judge? Uh, is like everyone in your family not in skating? Like what, what part of this? She tied, she tied Vincent and Jason in the performance. In the, per in the performance, the performance. Are you kidding me, Lori? Yeah, clueless, Lori. clueless. Terrible. Composition, 925 for Vincent. Only 975 for Jason. Again, what, what composition, come on. And then in interpretation, only 0.5 higher between Vincent and Jason. Are you kidding me? See, it's yeah. the, not just the marks, it's the difference. And tying Nathan Chen and Jason Brown for interpretation. Are you kidding wrong. me? That's just wrong. Are you kidding me. Performance yeah. nines, wait, wait, wait. Performance 975. For Nathan, Lori gave, and a nine five for Jason, and you're telling me that's not political? That's ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nathan, who dresses like he just got out of bed and threw something on, and I know that that costume is in the poster for the Antonio Banderas movie that he's skating to, but you know what? Not everything needs to be taken literally because he literally looked like he bought something at the mall and got on the ice. Although I will tell you what, I would rather him wear the short outfit that looks phoned in, but at least fits than the long, which I think the aesthetic is interesting, but the fit is so, it's like a maternity shirt. So it just becomes shapeless. It came from Shay's closet, he said. So well, look yeah, like cause a- Shay, Cause oh. Shay didn't want it. She's like, get this out of here. <laughs> I, come on, uh, Lori, like, come on. Okay, Jason only 0.25 higher than Nathan. I know that we don't want to embarrass the king of skating with how much better Jason is at basic skating than he is. But we have to be honest about it and reward Jason for the things he does well. And otherwise, there's no incentive for Nathan to get programs that aren't horseshit for next year. Right, this right. Are this year. And you literally were given, in my opinion, I have never seen a short program from a man more stunning, sophisticated, classy, powerful, like musical than this one. I can't think of one. I'm sorry, but Nathan Chen needs to get his ass back to either Marie France or Lori Nichol for the uh, this. What is that free skate? I like. It's all this. It's all this, and it's just. And then with the the point is when the shirt is so haphazard in the midsection, it just leads to like this overall like blah, kind of messy, sloppy, disheveled thing. Listen. He goes, well, you know, I like simple costumes. This isn't about simplicity. I love simplicity. I did not mind those Vera Wang costumes for the Olympics because at least they were fitted. So you could see a body lying in a spit. You could see what the body was moving like in the choreographic sequence for the, the step work, like or the footwork. This is just like. I'm sorry, but if I'm a judge and he is, do, and I'm watching the free programs from the nationals of Yuzu, Kolyada, Shoma Uno, and Nathan. He's my fourth favorite. Agreed. Because of the effort he put in to that choreographic performance. Yeah. It was. And again, Shoma is more simplistic. I Listen, Nathan, no one is telling you that you have to wear sequins. Like it did look funny when he came on after the Elvis program, which was just like glittered up. And you're like, okay, yeah, you're right. That's absurd. But just give us something fitted just so we see the body line. Otherwise, what are, uh, there's, there's a reason ballet dancers don't wear trash bags, because we want to see the line. Jonathan, you are on something today, you are on point. <laughs> it's early, it's when we do the nighttime ones that I'm more The reason ballerines don't wear trash bags. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> the man has spoken, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. And it was interesting. I think there was a, it was either the NBC Olympics article or a Phil Harsh article when they were saying, you know, Nathan just is such a perfectionist. Did you know he didn't even like his landings? I and I was like, well, not if he wants to win the Olympics, he can't like those landings. That's really where the, the difference is going to be made here, I think. So Now in the free, he did have the mistake I mean, look, I think he's saving his body this year. He's working on stuff. For, it just it just feels like a placeholder. It just, yeah. it just, oh my God. But it comes down to the music. Well, I'll I'm gonna say it. Say with, um, with Vincent, like Alyssa, I don't think that this has suddenly become a skater's skater, but in the short program in particular, I really appreciated 
the efforts and the movements in the right direction Vincent has made. Again, I'm very aware of the difference still between him and other skaters, but I think he's doing everything in his power he can to make it better. The short program, I suddenly saw a skater I have not seen in his him before. Great jumps, I thought great content, and I thought a, a, a pleasant program where literally it sometimes in the past it was it was hard to watch. And so this has come a long way. The the free skate right, less so. program. The pants of the free entirely the wrong color. Like I mean no, it was so strange. I didn't it looked like he took two different costumes and put them together. It's pandemic nationals. <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> everybody's doing the best they can. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'll have to say Todd Eldridge's boy, Yaroslav I didn't know how to say this last name because I don't know what ethnic background it is, but what a jumper. The former student of Slava Zagrunik and uh, Valentin Nikolaev, who's Galina's old assistant, and he was, you know, the jump coach and uh, for there, taught this man his technique and holy crap, is that good? Okay. Oof, the quad flip. I mean, again, I, clean as your life. You're allowed to, uh, Jonathan, do you think that maybe they should visit Valentin Nikolaev or ask, I don't know, his student Victor Petrenko, who works in Hackensack, to maybe help Lindsay with the drums to get them that big? That just saying. Just I'm saying. saying. He's there. He's around, Julia. You know, I think, you know, you might know him a little bit. And maybe they have that good technique, Julia, saying that maybe Lindsay could have the biggest jumps in the ladies' event, Julia, if maybe you asked her to jump like Victor, maybe it would be beautiful and big and she could get a much better double axle when that was Victor's best jump and Lindsay pauses into her double axle like Caroline Zhang. Just my opinion. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah. Duly noted. <laughs> Yaroslav. Um, so I'm sorry for my ignorance on this and I should have looked it up beforehand. Where the hell did he come from? I don't know, but I don't think he's a citizen yet. And I think that this is the one saving grace that Jason Brown has. Otherwise, they would have put Jason Brown in the pewter. He would have been- Yeah, pewter. yeah. Uh, well, especially because of Jason's pop axle situation. I was like, this is, he's actually really in danger here. There's only so much BCS can do. Um, but I loved watching, watching this talent. I mean, you know that that music slaughter on Fifth Avenue, 10th Avenue, whatever it is. And look, not my movie, not my jam. Not, I don't like the music. It's not my, but I really liked the program when we saw it in practice, right? And I still liked the program here. I think it's interesting. It's, it has a lot of cool moments. I don't think it was shot as well um, with the camera work as it can look in person. Uh, but obviously the pop jumps were, you know, and the mistake on the quad was distracting from the performance with Jason. I think though that for him, not having a competition before he came in here was a mistake. We talked about it before he came in and I think to go for the quad, he missed it in the warm up. He, he went for it and it was under and a fall and then missed the axle. You know, it's just one of those things where he has got to have a quad next season. I, I, I don't know who will have it, but it, it feels like we're having a repeat of uh, 2018. Even though- Well, and again, it puts so much pressure on all the other jumps if you're not gonna have it. And then to have popped the axle, I mean, that was a pretty, a pretty it's scary Kamala moment Harris, for what could happen. Is President Kamala Harris like a skating fan? Can she get, you know, Yaroslav citizenship like in some respect? Because um, he's someone that I'm also interested in. Like what, what can we do to get this man to the Olympic games? Yeah, Just and it was the only one because your eye first drew to him because he's wearing this yellow coat among everyone else's team jackets. Also, Todd, so you knew he was new on the scene. Todd Eldridge looks so good and like thin. Didn't he look handsome and so professional in the suit and all this sort of stuff? And they only showed a couple people. Jeremy Abbott needed the haircut, I think, before uh, nationals, the long hair. I, I know Jeremy's an artiste, but it looked <laughs> a little pandemic-y. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think he needed to look more like Todd Eldridge here. I mean, Todd Eldridge looked like a million bucks. He looked great, his skater did great, like the whole deal. Um, there was a cleanliness to, to the skate, even though it was, you know, an Elvis program, whatever, but um, a lot of nice things. They really buried him a bit on PCS. And 
if anyone can help you, I would think it's Todd, you know, can help keep improving those spins, but I, it's very promising. How old is he? Do you know? Yeah, let's look it up. I don't know. Let's look him up because, and it was, I was watching on NBC. or Ratingscores.com. This is what yes. you need to add to the skaters. I know you're a numbers person, the birth date and bio. Can you like import it from Wikipedia somehow? I think it's missing on your website because we want to know who is that? Can he yeah. go? To that is what is missing. Okay, so we did compete at nationals last year, ninth in the short, tenth in the free. But I mean, what we saw here was. No, oh, but he went to the Olympics before for Ukraine. So I, he finished 30th. Oh, okay. He last competed well, in Ukraine in November 2018. It's going to take him forever to get citizenship. Hmm. Well, start on it now. So. Because yeah. some really magnificent moments in those jumps. I mean, I don't think, he, I think it's going to take him a year and a day to get citizenship. I mean, he's like two years into this. I mean, could he marry someone? I don't think that would even get him there any quicker. No. So it's, it's a tough road. So uh, I think Jason has a um, strong, strong um, period of time ahead of him. So yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but like this, his, Todd Skater seems like um, the one who could upset Vincent even at some point if, he, if they start to hone those skills. But and some some tough watches in the men, unfortunately, also with um, Kros like, I, I, I'm used to hearing it Krasnojan, but here they kept saying Krasnojan or something like we'll that. We'll ask him how to say it, but yeah. uh, he had a great comeback in uh, in the free, you know, from that, sh that shows, you know, green yeah. and, and how about our hack and sack alumni resident Kevin G Jimmy Ma. Okay. Jimmy Ma. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. There were a couple of, so he had his expletive moment in the short program, oh. but oh. I don't know what they showed on NBC, but on Peacock premium, you catch a big expletive moment after Nathan's skate. That began with an F. Oh. Yeah. What? Who was Jimmy Ma pointing to up that he is just like And he said, you know, or this was for you, or this, you you knew it or something? This boy, we need to get him to like a different coach who can just like discipline him. I think maybe maybe he's the one we send to Robbie, or do we send him to Christy Ness too? Because maybe Christy Ness could scare the bejesus into him because this is a boy who is like so talented. And could you imagine? And has a performer thing in addition to it. It's not traditional, but he has that like X factor that he stole everyone's moment at that 2018 short program. Could you imagine Hoda Kotb watching a montage of Jimmy Ma's moments? He would be so famous. They would like, they would have him like Mystery Science Theater 3000, like watching stuff and just reacting. Okay. Oh, the absolute personality that that we would be rooting for. Great quad toe to start. And then that is who you need to send to the Olympics for personality reasons alone. Right. You right. just don't know what he's going to say. He's just fun music always that works. It Could always works. This year, I mean, he is just, God bless, bless his heart. Yeah. The hottest of messes. Okay. Just <laughs> falling on a hitch kick. <laughs> I, can't I know, my goodness. Well, like Brady at the end of her program, she fell in there too. Second quad. She needed that second quad. And then, no. Jimmy, you are so close. You are so close, Jimmy. This is. Because I would rather invest in someone like Jimmy than at this point a Camden. Oh, Camden, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, I think, I think you it have to be. him to fix those spins, to do everything. I mean, he has one more year to get it together. But he has a career of not making these improvements. No. Yeah. The whole article about how they're all friends in Colorado I was like, well, we see what happens. They all look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stopping friends and practice or something. I don't know. That was. How about Jason looking like. Handsome. He was more Michael Weiss, 98 Nagano short or Stars on Ice 1995 Rolling Stones finale. I mean, that was the vibe we were going for. Um, and I thought the short program, I mean, obviously I can't say enough amazing things. The costume was sensational, sensational. I didn't, I didn't mind the um, free skate one. I liked the simplicity of it. And again, it's about the fit that allows me to enjoy the beautiful lines and pictures he's creating. Yeah. But the ending to Jason Brown's short program, I caught it. 
iconic. Okay. I, I, I couldn't even breathe in, in, until he was finished. It was oh, just right. since He gave him breathing room in the mocks. Okay, yeah. apparently. <laughs> apparently, Laurie thought she was going to see a better men's show program. I, I don't know. Like, well, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, Jason's only a little better than Vincent, I guess, <laughs> in this game skills. Um, oh, Laurie, no. see you in your handiwork. Look. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. Our political animal on the panel. Yeah, but I think... I, and I'm glad to hear that Jason will keep that short. I need to see it. <laughs> Jonathan, I think Jason needs a really lyrical classical piece for next year and just a special. Law yeah. wants him to go, I don't know, Law wants Roheen. I want him to go David and Sandra for next year for the free. I think he needs an Olympic Sandra moment, okay? It's time, Tracy. You go to, you have wine nights with Sandra Besick. Why haven't we called Sandra for, look, David and Sandra are perfect together. And I think that this was- who's, who's the other one I love so much that um, I'm just not remembering his name right now, but that does Satoko's programs and we interviewed him. He's, um, come on, Satoko, who does she always use as a choreographer? Tom Dixon. Tom Dixon, has he ever done something with Tom Dixon? No, but he's like often sweeted. He's sometimes too conceptual, okay? Jason's okay. so lyrical and he gets so heavy on the concept sometimes. Like, okay, okay. I don't think it's the right thing for Jason. Okay, that makes sense. I think he needs a more balance of masculine and feminine energy, like Sandra and David or Roheen, or, you know, yeah. like more of a, a, no, I don't know. Sometimes and something that's kind of already within the wheelhouse. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it's time to like turn it upside down. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, like I think Tom has such concepts we don't see the emotion like we saw when Jason Schindler's List happened. That's what I think we could get. I'm going to argue that sometimes Tom doesn't have a skater like Jason he's working with. He's worked with some great ones before. Yeah. Ryan Yonke. But again, yeah. Ryan Yonke's Brazilian program didn't have the emotion. It had the fun, but that's like third, fourth place. It didn't have the emotion of the winner. Yeah, yeah. And J Jason has a gravitas to him. Yes. Yeah, that's so unlike anyone else. An extension that like we didn't see before. Is it the costume? Are they, is Karen Preston working on that? Like, what is that, that, that new thing that he got since he went to Canada? Like that extra... That extra level of sophistication also. Because again, the Rogin programs were always complicated and had sophisticated moments, but this is just like the culmination of all things. What was your moment of this nationals? Because that it was mine. Our program, okay. Yeah. Apparently, I heard that someone that we know called Tracy. And her initial reaction was, it's "Such a shame there wasn't an audience to see Jason's short program." I agree. I agree. I and agree. How we only had former U.S. champions shown. Where was our Tracy Wilson moment? I didn't see the zoom in on her like I wanted. We I had wanted more coach footage in general. I, again. Yeah. Here's the thing, it's a bit of a- Tom Z theater. running the camera? Like, come on. Like, what? <laughs> How come we didn't see Tracy, okay? Yeah. Like, it was strange that like the coach that put them on, if you're having the skater then also wear the mask and the kiss and cry, why the coach couldn't have been there also. I mean, I, I know they're just trying to protect themselves from people that are ready to lambast them for having the event, but um, I think the coach could have been in there if they were also wearing masks. I would have loved to, because I, I love seeing the interaction with Tracy. I would have loved to have seen Todd Eldridge talk to, to his skater, you know, that sort of stuff. Oh, miss Tracy. Didn't you miss Tracy? I just met, I, I do miss Tracy. She came all the way to America. We didn't get to see her on camera. Yeah, like, it's such a, such a lost opportunity because she's such a treasure. Why can't she be mic'd up during Jason's performance? Over the loudspeaker. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I want to hear. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy, we missed you, okay? We missed mm -hmm. you. We think that you were there in spirit. We couldn't see you, but it's okay. okay. And I agree. It's such a shame that there wasn't an audience for Jason's short program. Yeah. But also, greatest costume I've ever seen Madison Trucks live and dance. I'm telling you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It just reeked of class. He looked as great as Hubble looked horrible, okay? It was a moment in time. All right. Yeah, unfortunate that you had the best and the worst of Nationals costumes next to one another. Holden Edgen looks sexy. 